Hey Happy Friday, I'm back from Syria, I hope you didn't miss me too much last week and I hope you enjoyed the video that I made over there. This week we got really impressive new Snapdragon chips that run both Android flagship smartphones and also laptops, including even potentially Android laptops, and Apple started supporting third-party watches with iOS. Welcome to the Friday Checkout. This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Okay, for my first story of the week, Snapdragon Summit happened and the company announced the new flagship chip called the 8 Elite Gen 5. And we also got a first look at the phones that it will actually launch in and so far everything looks extremely promising. I won't bore you with too many details, but Android Authority put together a bunch of performance benchmarks and these show a lot. In single core Geekbench, the Snapdragon chip actually beats Apple's latest and greatest A-series chip on an iPhone. I remember that Apple used to completely wipe the floor with Qualcomm when it came to single core benchmarks especially, but they've apparently just completely caught up by now. Meanwhile, in multi-core, where we're kind of getting used to Qualcomm being victorious, their lead has actually continued to grow, and it's the same picture for the GPU as well, where Qualcomm takes a commanding lead too. As usual, we'll have to wait for final devices and more diverse testing, but it looks like Qualcomm is winning both in single core, multi-core, and GPU as well. Pretty impressive. And just as interesting is that all the phones that are featuring this new chip, like the Realme 8 GT, the Honor Magic 8 have all been teased and Xiaomi even properly launched their new 17 series phones right away. This Xiaomi lineup consists of the 17 Pro and Pro Max as well as a regular variant, and the higher end ones even feature a display on the back. And also cool is that these not only feature batteries up to 7,500 milliamp hours, but perhaps coolest of all is that they have 100 watt universal fast charging. This means that instead of needing a proprietary fast charging brick from Xiaomi, you can use anything with power delivery. Maybe your laptop has one with 100 watts, you could use that. Pretty cool. Okay, and for my second story of the week, Qualcomm has also released PC stuff, including their new X2 Elite, which is a 12 core successor to their previous PC chip, and even the X2 Extreme Edition, which bumps that up to 18 cores, some of which can even hit 5 GHz, which is a first for an ARM chip. The chips are powered by the third generation in-house Orion cores, and Qualcomm made some rather extreme claims that showed that the new chips are flat out destroying the competition from Intel and AMD, both in power and efficiency. Suspiciously missing from the comparisons, however, were chips from Apple. Anyway, Qualcomm especially claims massive gains in popular gaming titles, which was a big weak point for the chip, and they also put a big emphasis on software compatibility around both games and also creative applications like Ableton, Cinema 4D, and more, which were announced to have ARM versions coming soon. As a happy Snapdragon laptop user, I'm very excited what the second generation has to offer, but the charts around laptops are always really hard to compare until the real things come out, so don't declare the competition dead just yet. Oh, and at the end, Google and Qualcomm also confirmed that Android laptops are coming, and they said the following. By the way, I've seen it. It's incredible. I think it's, uh, it, it delivers on the vision of conversions to mobile and PC, and uh, I can't wait to have one. Nice little teaser there. Okay, and for my third story of the week, iPhone users could finally get more choice for their smartwatches. Macworld found an iOS 26.1 beta build that suggests iPhones will soon support third-party smartwatches. Specifically, notification forwarding was found, which will let users choose to show notifications on their iPhone on another non-Apple device or accessory, like presumably a Wear OS watch or a Garmin, etc. All of this is very likely due to the European Union's Digital Markets Act, specifically requiring Apple to allow for better compatibility. Of course, people like Eric Mijakowski, the founder of Pebble, have been very excited and thanked Apple for forcing Apple to open up. For now, it's unclear whether Apple would actually allow such a feature outside of the EU as well, and Apple just this week explicitly demanded that the EU scrap its landmark digital rules like the DMA, which it is presumably lobbying Trump to push for as well, so let's see how far this goes. Okay, and this week we also have a crazy busy release monitor where we start with the new GoPro Lit Hero. This is literally a hero action cam, but with a front-facing LED. I usually really dislike the flashlight look on anything, but this could be fun. Meanwhile, also this week, GoPro announced the Max 2, which is the company's new 360-degree camera, and they also showed off a gimbal called the Fluid AI Pro, because of course, every company eventually has to make every product. And talking of exactly that, DJI also announced the Osmo Nano, which is a tiny clip-on camera that is supposed to compete against the Insta360 Go series. It actually looks pretty good, and again, every company does everything. 
but then as an unexpected actual wildcard, Insta360 announced the Wave. It hilariously turns on with a motorized mechanism revealing a screen and then it lets you record meetings. It also transcribes them real time on device. It generates summaries and then it can also upload those along with your recordings either to a cloud via Wi-Fi or your PC via USB and it also has fairly decent speakers to play stuff back. You can even drop one of those motorized gimbal link webcams on top to capture both audio and video. Wild. Then moving on, Xiaomi unexpectedly also announced the 15T series, which is an almost flagship series that actually skips the brand new Snapdragon chips in exchange for very aggressive prices at 550 to 650 British pounds and cameras that my studio mate Killian was really quite in love with. Might be good who don't need all that performance. And meanwhile, the company also introduced the Signature Slim Solar Plus, which is a wireless keyboard that they claim will never have to be plugged in because of this little solar strip right here. They say this can harness not just solar light, but also indoor light somehow, and it turns that into juice for your battery, and this little guy came out more than a decade after its predecessor. They claim that the battery can survive 10 years of constant charging and discharging, after which you can swap it out. Meanwhile, it can also supposedly continue working in the dark for up to 4 months, which is nice because there's literally no charging port. And talking of keyboards, the Raspberry Pi 500 Plus is also live now and it's an actual computer built right into the keyboard. This includes all the smarts and even a slot for you to swap SSDs yourself, all for $200. I could see this thing being pretty popular. As usual, links to all the newly announced products I could find are in the description and now let's move on to the brief. This week, Proton finally announced a major revamp of its mobile apps that brings loads of improvements, including support for offline use and feature parity between iOS and Android. Hallelujah! Next, it now appears like Cowboy, the e-bike brand that I ride myself, is looking to get acquired after it ran into financial trouble. Rebirth Group Holding is supposed to buy them, which is apparently a Brussels-based investor that they've worked with before. I really hope they pull through. And also this week, we learned that, quote, Microsoft makes Windows 10 extended security updates free for an extra a year, but only in certain markets. And I bet you'll never be able to guess which markets these are. Surprise, it's the European economic area, because of course it is. The change comes after consumer defense organizations like Euroconsumers challenged Microsoft's decision to gate access to the ESU program behind conditions that benefited the company financially under the Digital Markets Act. And now consumers here will not have to either pay $30 or connect their Windows to Windows Backup. Cool. Then, in a rare American win for consumer protections, we learned this week that Amazon will pay $2.5 billion to settle the FTC's prime lawsuit and will also have to make it easier to cancel your existing subscription. And $1.5 billion from this pile will even be paid back to an estimated 35 million consumers impacted by the company's deceptive sign-up process. Nice. And moving on, Microsoft has announced that it has, quote, seized and disabled a set of services to a unit within the Israel Ministry of Defense. This was because they have, quote, found evidence that supports elements of The Guardian's reporting. And the report in question claimed that Israel was relying on Microsoft Cloud for expansive surveillance of Palestinians, which Microsoft said was not in compliance with their terms of service. There were tons of employee protests that have at least partially led to this, so that's something. And still with Microsoft, the company has also claimed this week that it has successfully developed something it calls an in-chip microfluidic cooling system. They essentially etched channels directly into the silicon itself that allowed their cooling liquid to flow directly onto the chip and more efficiently remove heat. That sounds pretty cool, literally. And if that last story sounded like fun to you, then you're the exact kind of nerd who should give Brilliant a try. It's an online learning platform filled with many of the best classes on science, computer science, engineering, and math topics, all of which are interactive and incredibly fun. Whether you want to learn the ins and outs of programming or get a proper in-depth understanding of how AI and large language models actually work on a fundamental level, or take some classes on statistics to help you make sense of loads of data, Brilliant has you covered. Their approach is to take big topics like these to break them down into many smaller manageable chunks and to then give you an interactive exercise after each to help you practice what you've just learned right away. Not only is this way more effective than just passively learning something, but it's also just more enjoyable. To try Brilliant for free, visit brilliant.org slash TFC or scan the QR code on screen, or you can also click the link in the description. And if you do either of those, you'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. So happy Friday, and I'll see you in the next episode.